In this segment, we're going to show you how to navigate and configure the Hayward Variable Speed Pumps interface. The first thing we want to do is to become familiar with the Variable Speed Pumps interface. First, you'll notice there are four speed buttons, also a left and right arrow, an up and down or plus and minus arrow, a menu button, stop resume, and a quick clean function. The first thing we want to talk about are the preset speeds. Speeds one through four. These are factory programmed and simply press speed one to activate and then press the right arrow to turn the pump on. Now we've lowered the speed today so that you'll be able to hear it while we're talking through the video. But if you needed to make an adjustment to that speed while it's running, simply press the up arrow to increase the speed or the down arrow to decrease the speed and once you make your selection, press the right arrow to save that. This speed will continue to run until an existing timer turns on or until you press the stop resume button. After you press stop, you'll notice the display is saying that the pump is stopped and to start normal operation again, you'll need to press the stop resume button. The next button we're going to talk about is the quick clean button. The quick clean button is used when you're going to clean your swimming pool or if you need to circulate water to add chemicals. To activate the quick clean, press the button. You'll notice that quick clean is set for 60 minutes. If you want to add additional time, simply press the quick clean button again and it will add 60 minute intervals all the way up to 360 uh, minutes. Once you've set the time that you want the quick clean to run, simply press the right arrow and that will actually start quick clean mode. To stop quick clean mode, press the stop resume button twice. Now, we're going to show you how to access the configuration menu. To do this, press the menu button one time. You'll see configuration menu locked. To access configuration menu, Press and hold the left and right arrow down for about three seconds or until you see press right arrow to enter show up on the screen. Once you do that, to enter configuration menu, press the right arrow. Once you press the right arrow, it'll let you know to press plus and minus to make changes and up and down for selection. It'll also let you know that the current displayed language is English at this time. Now, to enter the actual configuration menu, you'll want to press the right arrow. Once you do that, it'll let you know that you want to press plus and minus to make changes and the up and down arrows for your selection. To enter configuration menu at this point, press the right arrow. Once you do that, the screen will let you know to press the plus and minus to make changes and the left and right arrows to move or make selections. The first selection in the configuration menu is the display language. It's defaulted to English. To make changes, simply press the plus or minus key to select the language that you choose and then press the right arrow to select. The next available menu is to set date and time. To make changes to this, press the plus arrow to change and then you'll be able to adjust your day of the week by pressing the plus or minus key, right arrow, will allow you to adjust the hour, right arrow again to adjust the minutes, and one more time for AM or PM. Once you have all that set, press the right arrow again. The next available menu is the time menu. In this menu, you're able to change the date and time. To do so, press the plus key. You'll notice that Tuesday is flashing. To change the day of the week, press the minus or the plus key to change it to whatever day of the week you need it to be. In this case, it's Friday. Once you've set the day of the week, press the right arrow. This will allow you to adjust your hour. Once you have it on the hour, press the right arrow. You now can adjust the minutes. Then press your right arrow again, and this will allow you to adjust whether it's AM or PM. Once you have everything set correctly, Press the right arrow to save. 
The next available menu is the speed selection. In this menu, you can program the pump to either read in RPMs or in the percentage of full speed. Once you make your desired selection, press the right arrow to save. The next available menu is max allowed speed. This is the maximum speed that the pump will be allowed to run at. To make changes, press the plus or minus key to set that speed. Also keep in mind, once you set your maximum speed, that is the maximum speed that will run in quick clean mode as well as priming mode. Once you've set the speed, press the right arrow. The next menu is minimum allowed speed. In this menu, simply press the plus or minus key to set the minimum speed that the pump will be allowed to run. Once you're finished, press the right arrow. The next menu is prime duration. The prime duration is factory set at eight minutes from the factory. If you want to change that, change it to the amount of time that you prefer. And once you do, set the right arrow to save. The next menu is prime duration. Prime duration is factory set at eight minutes. And keep in mind, prime will only run at the maximum speed that you set in the previous menu. To make changes, press the minus key or plus key to add or subtract time. Once you get it on the time that you need, press the right arrow to save. The next menu is remote control mode. Remote control mode comes factory preset at standalone, which means that the pump can be operated by itself or you could be connected to Hayward Automation. To make a change, press the plus key or minus key to switch it to relay control. Relay control is when connecting the Hayward variable speed pump to an automation system that does not communicate with us. Press the right arrow to save. The next menu is low temp operation. Low temp operation is used to protect the electrical components inside the pump. To enable low temp operation, press the plus key. Once it says enabled, you'll want to press the right arrow to save that. And now it takes you to the setting for the low temp. To make changes, press the plus or minus key to increase or decrease that temperature. Once you have it at the set point that you choose, press the right arrow. Once you press the right arrow, keep in mind that low temp operation is going to run at maximum speed for eight hours unless power is interrupted. The next menu is password protection. To enable password protection, press the plus key. Once you see that it is enabled, press the right arrow key. Here you can set the password timeout. Currently it is set for 15 minutes. If you want to change that to 30 minutes, to an hour, once you get it set on the amount of time that you want the timeout to be, press the right arrow to save. On this next screen, we see the factory default password is 1234. To make changes to that password, press the plus. Otherwise, to skip, press the right arrow. When the password protection is enabled and the timeout has elapsed, the user will be prompted to enter the password to unlock the display when any of the display buttons other than the stop resume are selected. The user may use the stop resume button to stop the pump and resume normal operation without having to enter the password. Once you've made your selections and chosen your password, press the right arrow to save. On the next menu, is reset all settings. So if you wanted to reset your pump back to factory settings, you would simply press the plus key. Once you do that, it's gonna prompt you a second time to make sure that you wanna reset all your factory settings. In this case, we do not, so we're gonna press the minus, and we're gonna press the minus a second time to make sure that we don't reset the factory settings. On the next screen, you'll see Use Timers menu to set daily timers. As a reminder, it's just letting you know that. If you press the right arrow, it'll let you know that you are at the end of the menu and you need to press the menu button to exit. Press the menu button and it takes you back to the main screen. Now we're gonna talk about the Timers menu. Press the menu button twice and you'll see Timers menu and then press the right arrow to enter that menu. 
Once you press the right arrow, you'll note that you can press plus or minus to make changes and then press the right arrow for the next timer. Now we're going to show you how to edit a timer. Once you're in the timers menu, notice that it says press plus to make changes or right arrow to move to the next timer. We're going to edit timer one, so we're gonna press the plus button. Once you press the plus button, you have the option to name that timer. Hayward offers a wide range of options of names inside the timers. You can press the plus key to change that to whatever best suits your needs. We're gonna leave it as timer one. Once you've decided the name of the timer, press the right arrow to go to the speed. Now that we're in the speed selection, notice it is flashing at 600 RPMs. To adjust that, press the plus key to set it for the speed that you desire. We're going to go with 900 RPMs. Once you get it set, press the right arrow. Now you'll notice that the start time is flashing. To make changes to the start time, simply press the plus or minus arrow. We'll change it to 9 p.m. Once you have that set, press the right arrow, and now you can program your end time, and we're just gonna take that to 1 a.m. Once you're done with that, press your right arrow again, and it's gonna ask you to choose the days of the week. Press the plus arrow, you can choose individual days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days a week, where it only runs Monday through Friday, or seven days a week. We're going to leave it on seven days a week. Once you're finished, press the right arrow. Timer one is now set. Now that timer one is programmed, you can go ahead and program as many timers as you will need. Notice if you continue pressing the right arrow, you can scroll through all eight timers. Notice that some of them are off. To turn a timer off, you simply need to set the start and stop time at 12 a.m. Now we're going to show you how to program the four speed buttons. To access the speeds menu, press the menu button three times. Press the right arrow to enter the speeds menu. Notice speed one is programmed on this pump for 700 RPMs. To make a change to that, press the plus key once you press the plus key, you now can rename the speed if you want to change it, just like you could do in the timers menu. To do that, press the plus or minus arrow to make changes. Once you have it on the name that you want, press the right arrow. Now you'll notice that speed one, the 700 is flashing. To adjust that speed, press the up arrow and set it to whatever speeds you need. In this case, we're gonna set it for 900 RPMs. Once you get that set, press the right arrow. Now it's gonna show you what you programmed speed one for, and it's gonna let you know to end the setup, press the right arrow to go to the next speed. And then you can program speeds two through four at whatever RPMs you choose. Keep pressing the right arrow, and once you get through to speed four, you want to press the menu to exit. And again, it's going to prompt you to save your changes by pressing plus. Now let's review what's in the diagnostic menu. To access that, press the menu button four times. And then press the right arrow to enter. It's going to inform you to press the right arrow to continue to the next item. The first thing that is displayed is the revision. And this one is 2.05. Press the right arrow. It gives you the drive serial number. Press the right arrow. It gives you the com rev and the drive rev. Press the right arrow. And then it's gonna show you the event log. If your pump has had any issues or errors, they will be logged in this area. Press the right arrow to view the log. And then when you're finished, press the menu button to exit. 